Live from KSAT 12, the 6 o'clock news starts right now. Ending the work week with some more rain. Some good downpours happening this afternoon across parts of the viewing area. But are they going to hang around or rain themselves out? Here's Adam Kasky. It looks like they're already raining themselves out. Uh, delays for high school football games unlikely around our area. Goliad, Victoria, still some lightning down there. Those are healthier showers and storms. But you look over the last hour and this downpour that we've had for a few hours now on the city's south side has really started to dissipate and fall apart. It's raining itself out. Even that last little bit that flared up near Elmendorf over the past 45 minutes, uh, that is starting to rain itself out as well. So this is all coming to an end. It may look like it's going to rain, but as every hour goes by, the odds really fall off quite a bit. There is some lightning off to the west with this downpour that's just drifting to the southwest from Dehennis southward south of Highway 90 into very rural and unpopulated areas. But that's really all we have out there. Otherwise, the rest of this evening, generally dry, very humid. Temperatures gradually falling down through the 80s and not much of a breeze either. We'll talk about the weekend and beyond in just a bit. All right, we'll see you then. Thanks, Adam. 22 and 24 years. Those were the sentences handed down to a pair of cousins as part of their plea deals in a 2018 shooting that killed a teenager and a 69 year old man. But as Garrett Berger tells us, there was still a third suspect out there who at the moment is not even charged. I wanted to say that uh, I do accept full responsibility for my actions. And I want to say sorry to everybody that I hurt in this situation. Though his mother claimed he didn't fire a gun in the incident, Juan Martinez got 24 years today for his role in the murders of 14-year-old Angel Gabara and 69-year-old Benito Gallegos. Two more years than his cousin Andres Martinez got when he was sentenced earlier in the day. The teenage victim's mother in the courtroom for both. I have to go to the cemetery to celebrate my son's birthday to Christmas. And don't destroy my life. According to their indictments, the Martinez's and a third man, Richard Montez, were accused of shooting Gallegos during a robbery and then shooting in the direction of a nearby apartment and hitting Gabara inside. The teen's loss has left his mother carrying a heavy emotional weight, lightened a little by the Martinez's sentencing. But the, one, the third one is still there. It's like, am I going to get that third justice? That is an open question. Montez was supposed to go to trial earlier this month. But the special prosecutor had the case dismissed since key witnesses were unavailable and the judge wouldn't grant a delay. The special prosecutor has said he intends to reindict Montez, but it hasn't happened yet. Plus, while the cousin's plea deals included agreements to testify, a special prosecutor in Juan Martinez's case said he doesn't have to anymore. Since Montez's case was dropped, there could no longer be a requirement and the sentence has been handed down. Speaking to us after the sentencing, though, Juan Martinez's attorney said his client would testify if called upon. At the Cadena Reeves Justice Center, I'm Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. Now to a life sentence, that is the punishment for a man convicted this week for a deadly shooting over tires. A jury gave Richard Vallejo that life sentence today. He is convicted of killing Andrew Gomez back in June of 2020 after Gomez tried to talk to him about money that he owed on rental tires. Vallejo claimed self-defense in this case. He even took the stand yesterday and talked about how he feared for his life after getting text messages from Gomez. Gomez, who was unarmed, was shot six times. Vallejo is eligible for parole in 30 years. Week one of the public corruption trial of Michelle Barrientes Vela in the books. Today we learned how deep law enforcement's investigation of her went in the summer of 2019 as they looked into whether she tampered with security receipt logs for a Westside County Park. Dylan Collier on the key players this probe developed. <laughs> Former Precinct 2 clerk Susan Tristan was back on the stand Friday, detailing how she used a county visitor log to track down the Texas Ranger investigating her boss. I wanted somebody to know what was going on inside the, that office. What developed was a series of meetings between Tristan and Ranger Bradley Freeman and then the FBI who supplied her with a secret recording device. I felt there was wrongdoing with Rodriguez Park. Her objective is not relevant how she felt. 
Despite Tristan taping multiple conversations with Barrientos Vela without the constable's knowledge, there's been no evidence presented so far that she ever recorded anything incriminating. Disputes over what Tristan could testify to specifically led to multiple objections and matters heard outside the presence of the jury throughout the morning. The 211 pages. The ex-constable's former attorney described the process of getting park records from Barrientos Vela and turning them over to the district attorney's office. And this was a grueling week of testimony. Next week is expected to be no different. Barrientos Vela faces up to 10 years in prison if convicted. Reporting live downtown, Dylan Collier, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Dylan. San Antonio police investigating a deadly stabbing on the north side this morning. The victim, an apparent house guest of the man that officers say stabbed him. Both the victim and the suspect were found inside a home in the 100 block of Inglewood Drive this morning after getting a series of bizarre phone calls. As Katrina Weber reports, they are still trying to figure out who the murdered man is. Officers stand outside a home on Englewood Drive, not far from West Avenue, waiting for court papers allowing them to search it thoroughly. What they found on the surface, though, had them calling what happened here a murder. They discovered a male who uh, was lying in what appeared to be a pool of blood uh, on the floor. Police say they found another man here, the one who lives in this home. They believe that 30-year-old stabbed and killed the victim, someone who was visiting. They also believe he alerted them to the crime scene through several strange phone calls after 6 this morning. Told our dispatcher that he had hurt someone, then hung up. Approximately two minutes later, he called back saying that he might hurt someone and that he found the stairway to heaven. Once officers arrived, they say they were met with strange behavior. The suspect not letting them in at first, then finally opening up. At one point, officers put out an emergency tone calling for extra help. They say the suspect put up a struggle as they tried to take him into custody, but ultimately neither he nor the officers were hurt. As for the man who was killed, police didn't have much information early on. They hoped the search of the home might tell them more about who he was and why he was killed. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. A woman recovering after she was shot while out on a walk this morning. It happened in the 1300 block of Austin Highway near the Sun Motel on the northeast side. She told police she suddenly felt something hit her leg and that someone in a car shot her. She kept walking back to the motel to get cleaned up, but she says the bleeding wouldn't stop. Someone saw her, called 911. She was taken to a hospital, is expected to be okay. Right now, police don't have any information on a suspect or a vehicle. Almost a year after it happened, San Antonio police have arrested a woman. They say shot another woman over a man. 35-year-old Latitas Lynette Saitnawa has been charged with aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. The shooting happened on September 18th, 2021 on the city's east side. According to arrest information, she is accused of shooting the victim who was sitting in her car at the time four times. The woman suffered life-threatening injuries but did survive. According to investigators, the two women had been fighting over the same man for two years. Bond is now set at $100,000. Check out traffic on this Friday. Let's go to I-10 and Hackberry on the near east side, and you can see uh, the traffic that's coming towards us very slow going. I believe that would be the uh, eastbound lanes of I-10 at Hackberry. You can see it's very slow going out there as we move towards the weekend. New at 6 during yesterday's clearing of the homeless camp under I-37, photojournalist Eddie Latigo saw several people with pets like this guy. Nonprofits across San Antonio say it's a reality becoming more prominent in the city as pet companionship helps with the emotional well-being of people experiencing homelessness. But some need help feeding their furry friends. Alicia Barrera spoke to the San Antonio Food Bank on their work to address the need. What pets need is companionship and love. And these dogs have found it in a community oftentimes forgotten. When it comes to the homeless population, they might be living in an encampment. They might be on the streets. Their security, their only companion is their pet. And the fact is that many experiencing homelessness would rather sleep on the streets with their pet than go to a shelter without them. And that's a reality community groups recognize. For many of these shelters that house the homeless, they just don't have the facilities to be able to accommodate a pet. It's included 
unclear how many individuals living on the streets are pet owners, but feeding those in need is what the San Antonio Food Bank is all about. Through their partner, Daisy Cares, they've worked to collect supplies to make sure all pets are provided for. More pet food, what's the demand, what's the need, and it's about a half a million pounds of pet food a year, and so that's 20 semi-truck loads that we're trying to collect. A pet that eases loneliness and can reduce stress, anxiety, and depression. I mean, I, I, I was humbled, you know, learning that oftentimes the food boxes we would provide to nourish an individual would be used to, to feed a pet. Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. Let's take a look outside with live cam. We have talked about the rain that is left out there. Some people fortunate enough to see some more today. Yeah, it looks like there's still some way off in the distance out there. Adam Kasky, we'll have your forecast coming up. We're kicking off the high school football season tomorrow at the Alamo Dome with a triple header in the KSAT Pigskin Classic. KSAT crews will be out there starting pregame coverage around 11 a.m. The first game kicks off at 1130. You can get tickets at the Alamo Dome box office for just $20. You can still get tickets for all three games for $15 at Las Palapas. Scan the QR code on your screen for everything you need to know about tickets to clear bag policy, parking at the Alamo Dome, and Little League World Series fans can still catch those games as well. We're going to be actually live streaming ABC's coverage on our website, ksat.com. I'm Stefania Jimenez. Some developing news that we're following right now. The Bear County Sheriff's Office made an arrest in a shooting case that was caught on camera and also shared on social media. We know that 22 year old Genesis Rodriguez is facing charges in this case. We're speaking with the victim who says that their home was hit during that gunfire. We're going to have that story for you tonight. Plus, we showed you video last night, this video, but what should you do if you find yourself in a road rage situation? We're going to speak with an expert who's preparing others before they get behind the wheel. Also, we are nearing the start of the case at Pigskin Classic. We're talking student athletes, parents, performers are all sharing their excitement with us tonight. We'll see you for those stories and more on the night beat. Thanks, Stephanie. New at six, helping children heal through art. That's what a local man is hoping to do at Santa Rosa Children's Hospital downtown. RJ Marquez caught up with the artist who is transforming the walls at his workplace, all for a good cause. So I'll pick one main wall and then get some ideas together. If you've been to Children's Hospital lately, you may have noticed some colorful changes on the walls. For the past year, Anthony De Leon Sr. has been using his free time to paint several murals at the hospital. There's a giraffe that I drew, and it's just basically the giraffe head. So as you're going into the x-ray room, he peeks around the corner. There's also paintings of pandas, whales, and sea turtles, all meant to brighten the mood of a child that might be going through a tough day. Just changes the whole aspect of coming in to see the doctor, you know, and keeps, you know, brings the kid's mind at ease. De Leon Sr. has worked at Children's Hospital for more than two decades. He's a cast technician during the day and an artist by night. Start to finish, it can take me a whole week to come in, maybe at 10 a.m. Saturday morning and leave at 10 a.m., 10 p.m. Saturday night. And Anthony tells us that each floor has a different theme. You can see right beside me, this is an under the sea theme with a submarine and a shipwreck behind me. In total, Anthony has created 16 murals so far here at Children's Hospital San Antonio. We actually want those children to get wild at when they see this artwork and stuff is coming up with something that the kids will love and I know that what they would enjoy. He says the support from patients, family, and coworkers is all the inspiration that he needs. I hold dearly in my heart getting me started and bringing all this to life because, I mean, it was in there. It just needed to be brought out for the children. RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. So in the back of the comment. Talented guy. Yeah, I love that. All right, we're over Coma Lander Stadium for one of the games in our big game coverage tonight. It's the first full Friday night slate of games. And so we've got you covered all over the place, including Floresville. Mm -hmm. That's where our Larry Ramirez is joining us now, or will be joining us actually a little bit later coming up in sports. And, and sometimes I think I can't believe we're here already football season. But then the stretch of heat we've had, I think, yeah, it's about time. I'm it's ready. about time. For yeah, that. I'm ready. Bring on fall. I mean, we're all anticipating that first cold front, right, where you can really feel the humidity drop and temperatures drop. And 
maybe even need a jacket or sweatshirt in the morning. Oh, what? I, not, it's not in the forecast right now. Okay, I want to make that clear. Okay. But you know, give it some time. <laughs> that day will come, and we're going to be enjoying it. Rain that we have out there right now, it's going to be ending pretty quickly this evening. I don't anticipate any lightning delays for the high school football games and then generally dry into the weekend. Still tropical air in place, so it's going to be very humid and sticky and muggy out there and a few highly isolated afternoon showers, but generally dry this weekend. We give it a 10% chance the next couple of afternoons Then we raise those chances again, 20, 30 to 40% toward the middle part of next week. And that's because of a shift in our weather pattern that could be favorable favorable for more numerous showers and better coverage. All right, here's the activity. Goliad lit up right now with the downpour that moved from Victoria to Goliad that has since dissipated out. But you take a look at the radar over the past three hours and you really look at the trend here and especially right over San Antonio. We had this downpour that developed and this dumped over two inches of rain on parts of the south side of San Antonio. That's at least according to radar estimates, but pretty good to see outflow boundaries coming in, colliding, developing this downpour and even throwing some outflow boundaries to the north, which briefly developed some showers on the far north side of town, but they've already since dissipated. The one we, we reported on at five o'clock is already done with in the Stone Oak area. Elmendorf right along 1604, just south of Calaveras Lake, east of Bronig Lake. One last little sprinkle along 181 and south of 181. That's all that's left from those showers. But these downpours here through an outflow boundary south through Poteet into Pleasanton and Jordanton, and that has ignited a new shower. There could be some brief lightning and thunder with this, so it wouldn't shock me if uh, you do hear a rumble of thunder quickly around Jordanton, but this shouldn't last all that long. We're approaching the time of day where this activity uh, kind of struggles to really develop more and typically is fairly short lived. Even what we have just south of Sabinal, west of Hondo, this is starting to slowly rain itself out as it drifts to the southwest. So that's what we have out there. But you look at the rainfall over the past 12 hours. Not bad especially right there south side of San Antonio. We're talking two inches estimated by the radar right near McCollum High School in Mission San Jose. So it's good to see that. Also, the newest drought monitor, of course, updated yesterday, shows improvements across the state, especially in the extreme and exceptional drought categories. That's down 18% compared to last week's drought monitor. And this doesn't take into account any rainfall after about 7 a.m. on Tuesday. So the rain that we had around San Antonio, not even today, look at the time lapse, not included in that drought monitor. So I anticipate more improvements next week. 94 are high, no rainfall at the airport today, but saw the difference on the south side of town. 83 degrees right now, dew point is 69. It feels like it's 86, very sticky outside. Temperatures in the 70s where we had the rain. Kelly Field, 78, 78 Stinson, even 79 in Hondo. Meanwhile, 90 in Bull Verde, 94 in New Braunfels, and even 90 in Uvalde. And Pleasanton went from 96 down to 87, just like that because of that rain shower nearby. So the rain ending pretty quickly this evening and then just partly cloudy and humid. 76 in the morning tomorrow, near 90 at noon, and then 94 the high temperature with high humidity. I'm glad we'll be indoors in the Alamo Dome in the air conditioning for the KSAT Pigskin Classic. And I've been getting my t-shirts ready for the canyon. Oh, it's going to be good. I, I launched six of them today out in the, all at once at the KSAT uh, in, the, in the, the parking lot out there, just testing it. Okay, anyway, carbon copy, Saturday, Sunday, same thing. 10% chance of a shower, pretty quiet weekend. And then below 100 degrees, that's the trend here. And that's one of the things we need to focus on. Yeah, he's like, yeah, I launched six of them at once. No big. No bigs. <laughs> no, no bigs, bigs. as he yeah. says. No bigs. No bigs. Mm -hmm. All right, one of our friends who will be joining us in the Alamo Dome tomorrow, our own Larry Ramirez. But before that, he's got a road trip ahead of him. He joins us from Floresville, where it looks like they got some rain down there, Larry. Yeah, I was uh, coming down cats and dogs there for a little while. I'm going to say it lightened up maybe, I don't know, 10 to 15 minutes ago. Now we're just dealing with the humidity. So, yes, we are here in Floresville where the Tigers will kick off their 2022 football season against the Lanier Vokes. This is also part of the peanut butter bowl games going down around the area. And the Poth Pirates are home tonight as well. we got to preview of that one coming up.
Good evening, everybody, and welcome live to Floresville High School, where tonight the Tigers will host the Lanier Vokes. And you know what? Every single team is excited to kick off the season because they all have dreams of winning some hardware by the time it's all said and done. Now, Wednesday, when we stopped by Tigers practice here out in Floresville, they had to move inside the gym due to lightning in the area still. We were here long enough to get a handful of plays and do some interviews. The Tigers are ready to face Lanier under the guidance of Vokes first-year head coach Sal Tellez, now that Don Gatton has retired. Well, I'm very excited to play this well-coached team. The coaches have been very honest about how we need to execute their plan, and I feel like we've came to that, and we have a good plan for them, and I'm just excited for Friday night. Well, obviously, I want to, like, as a like team group for senior, like my whole senior class, we want to make a stamp on the organization. We're trying to not look past the first game, but obviously we want to get to playoffs. We want to win the first game, win the next game. So we're taking a step by step, trying to have a winning season. Floresville head coach Andrew Roars loves the fact that tonight is part of the peanut butter bowl games going on in the area. Uh, well, I'm really thankful for the opportunity that uh, that we got to be able to take part in that. Uh, we're going to raise our peanut butter jars uh, for the Floresville Food Pantry, okay. uh, and so any chance that we have to give back to our community and have and teach our kids the importance of giving back to the community is really important and uh, means a lot to us, especially since we're the peanut capital of the world. So yes. we're excited about it. Our second game tonight will see the Pleasanton Eagles hosting the Antonian Apaches, led by head coach Steven Liska. The Eagles advanced to the Class 4A Division I Regional Semifinals last season, and you know what? The Eagles absolutely love playing at home. Every Friday night last, last season, the, no, matter what, no matter what the record was, no matter what the score was, they stayed behind our back, and they were there for every game. Every game, and they came out, packed the stands, and it was, it's amazing to be a part of Pleasanton. Every Friday night, the stands are packed. And just cheering all night long. And we'll end the night in Jurington where the Indians hope to create some fumbles against Natalia. The Indians went six and five last season, advancing to the playoffs for the sixth straight year. That's a nice run and the seniors are aiming to make it seven straight. Uh, it means a lot. I've been, I've been on varsity since I was a sophomore, so and I've been playing since I was in third grade. So coming into my senior year, it's a, it's a big year for me. You know, it, Everything's built up to this year, to having my best year. Uh, I wouldn't want to play for anyone else or a different community. Community's had our back since I, as long as I can remember. Fill the stands every Friday night, just all I can ask for. BGC Road Trip is about to go down, everybody. You can catch the highlights on the Night Beat and BigGameCoverage.com. Okay, so right down the road on 181, the Poth Pirates are getting ready to kick off their season at home tonight. And they have a tough non-district opener with the Blanco Panthers. Never an easy out. Now, Poth advanced to the fourth round of the playoffs last season and will rely on that extra game experience as they look to replace 10 seniors. Success was great. It was a great feeling going that far last year, and we're just going to take the momentum and keep go taking it into this season. Hopefully, do the same. It was really exciting. That's the first time we've been that far since 1968, so it was a big, big deal for our program and for how we grow for this year. We're looking to create our own identity. Uh, we're looking to make another run in the playoffs, uh, looking to make another run at a district championship. Uh, the district's going to be tough. We added comfort, uh, West Campus, and those guys, so it it'll be very competitive. All right, so we are about 35 minutes away from kickoff here between Floresville and Lanier. So that's it for me in Floresville. Let's go live back to San Antonio and the Alamo Dome where David and RJ are standing by. Guys? All right, thank you very much, Larry Ramirez. It's going to be a fun night tonight out where you're at. And David, we have got already a lively crowd here at the Alamo what? Dome what? for this big rivalry matchup, O'Connor versus Brenda. Watch this, watch this, watch this. Just shoot those guys. Watch, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Doesn't take much, doesn't take much. Game one, Friday night, baby. Woo, the excitement is here. There you go, now. Yeah, as we, so this game is so big that they moved it to the Alamo Dome. It used to be played at Ferris Stadium, but it's just one of the many games that we're going to have. Make sure to download the KSAT BGC app. You can live stream up to 10 to 12 games from our area, all right there in one place. This is just a warm up for a big weekend because we got all these games tonight. KSAT 12, Greg Simmons and Larry Mears. You saw Larry a while ago. They're covering all these games. And then tomorrow it's the big KSAT Pigskin Classic. 
Yes. Oh, yeah. Every so, weekend of football. yeah, we're pumped up for football tonight, getting ready for the triple header tomorrow. Back to you guys in the studio. Let's go, guys. High school football season. Get All right, if it, it, that, is, that is kind of the unofficial start right there. RJ and David <laughs> That's getting kicked off. Here. With the fans, yeah, absolutely. All right, we're ready to go now. Thanks, guys. Still to come here at 6 o'clock, the Federal Reserve says the pain in the fight to get inflation under control, it's not done yet. What Jerome Powell says his agency is committed to, to drive prices back down. Next. And there is more work to do to bring down inflation. That was the message Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell delivered today. This happened during a closely watched economic symposium where he warned the U.S. economy is likely to see a period of slowed growth. And interest rates could get higher as the Fed battles inflation. Gloria Pasmino breaks down the economic news. The economic pain is likely to continue. Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell delivered the keynote speech at the annual Jackson Hole Economic Symposium Friday, sending a clear message that the central bank's continued focus is to tame rampant inflation. Our responsibility to deliver price stability is unconditional. Powell said reducing inflation will not come easy. A period of slower growth is likely awaiting the U.S. economy. While higher interest rates, slower growth, and softer labor market conditions will bring down inflation, they will also bring some pain to households and businesses. Despite Powell's warning, the Fed's preferred measure of inflation, known as the Personal Consumption Expenditures Price Index, showed that price increases slowed in July. It's all key to how Americans are perceiving the current economic climate. The idea is that if people believe prices are going to, up, going to go up, that becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. And so you want to nip that in the bud and convince the public, convince markets, convince consumers, convince businesses that, no, don't worry, we have it under control. Wall Street was quick to react. Major indices dropped after Powell hinted at the likelihood of sustained periods of higher interest rates. These are the unfortunate costs of reducing inflation. But a failure to restore price stability would mean far greater pain. In New York, I'm Gloria Pasmino reporting. News around America to help women seeking abortion services. Google is starting to start label is going to start labeling medical facilities that provide those services. The company says those labels would be prominently displayed in its search and map products. Facilities will be labeled as provide abortions and might not provide abortions. Google says it is going to confirm available services by calling the businesses directly or using reliable data sources. Google's competitor Yelp recently made a similar policy change. NASA and Boeing pushing back the first crewed flight of its long-delayed Starliner astronaut mission. It's now set for 2023. Launch officials say the mission could now take off as early as February. Starliner had been slated to get astronauts off the ground by the end of 2022. But several problems, like some of the Space Liner's thrusters failing to power on and some software issues, have pushed things back. And Starliner is already behind schedule. Though there haven't been many cases of students getting monkeypox, it is still happening. What some schools say that they're going to do to keep students safe still ahead. And Moderna taking Pfizer and BioNTech to court because of its COVID-19 vaccine. Why and why now? Next at 6. Moderna is suing competitors Pfizer and BioNTech for patent infringement relating to COVID vaccines. That suit filed today alleges Pfizer and BioNTech copied Moderna's mRNA technology in the making of their vaccine, Comirnaty. Technology Pfizer says was critical in the development of its own vaccine, SpikeVax, and that Pfizer and BioNTech used that technology without permission. Back in October 2020, Moderna pledged not to enforce COVID-related patents in the heat of the pandemic when vaccines were harder to come by. This past March, Moderna updated its pledge asking companies to respect its intellectual property rights and request proper licenses to use its technology. Moderna says Pfizer and BioNTech failed to do so, but says it is not aiming to remove Pfizer's COVID vaccine from the market or prevent future sales. The risk of contracting monkeypox remains low for school-age children, but more than a dozen reported, confirmed, or probable cases in younger kids, putting schools, colleges, and universities on alert. 
Mandy Gaither has more on why the concern for children remains low and what can be done to best protect against the virus. In the U.S., more than 16,000 people have confirmed or probable monkeypox infections. Almost all are in adults. But the transmission of this virus typically occurs by skin to skin contact. And if, you know, a children has contact with somebody who's infected, they're going to get infected. While the risk of monkeypox for school age children remains low, 17 confirmed or probable cases among kids younger than 15 have been reported to the CDC. This week in Newton County, Georgia, a confirmed case in an elementary school student, another student at a different school in the district is also being tested. School system officials saying employees will thoroughly clean and disinfect classrooms and other areas at both schools. I think we don't need to panic about this. I think we need to stay informed. But the cases in children, as you already said, are less than 1% of the total cases that we see. For extra protection, health experts say parents can familiarize yourself with the symptoms. Keep children home if they have a fever and rash. Talk to your pediatrician since several illnesses cause fever and rash. Wash hands and clean and disinfect surfaces. When it comes to colleges and universities, the CDC has launched a new landing page with monkeypox resources. We have a whole protocol uh, in place to help people you know, be evaluated. I'm Mandy Gaither. All right, we have ended the week with a little bit more rain, so now we wonder about the weekend rain chances. Yeah, you know, this guy does the forecast and folding. <laughs> yes, he's just quickly removed all of the shirts. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> okay. Nobody look Clean under weather the desk. center. Yeah. Nobody look. Don't know what's under the desk. <laughs> I don't I look. I keep a very clean weather center. Okay. It's not thermometers today, so I'm getting my shirts ready, my ammunition ready for the pigskin classic. You know, you look at the seven day forecast, we do have increased rain chances in the days ahead. We'll talk a little bit more about that and a look at the tropics coming right up. The wait is almost over. The KSAT Pigskin Classic tomorrow at the Alamo Dome. Three huge high school football games. KSAT crews will be out there starting pregame coverage at 11 a.m. First game kicks off at 1130. I'm really looking forward to tomorrow. You can get the tickets at the Alamo Dome box office for $20. That covers all three games. If you hit your nearby Las Palapas, though, tickets are just $15 for the same three. Scan the QR code on your screen for everything you need to know about tickets, the clear bag policy, and parking at the Alamo Dome. There has been a lot of buzz around NASA's next outer space mission. The Artemis 1 mission scheduled to launch Monday morning. The unmanned space launch system rocket will carry the Orion spacecraft, which will go beyond the moon before it comes back to Earth. Cool name. Artemis. Artemis. This is a big test for the space agency. Orion will travel farther than any other spacecraft built for humans has ever flown. Artemis 1 scheduled to crash into the Pacific Ocean on October 10th. Cassie said Artemis is rowdy. Yeah, I'll well, see. There you go. Row, row. <laughs> Hashtag. Hashtag row, row. <laughs> oh, Star Trek's Nichelle Nichols spent part of her life pretending she was in outer space. Now, the late actress will spend eternity there. Celestis Memorial Space Flights announced it is launching her remains into deep space. Hmm. The company offers memorial flights and says that her ashes would be on board the Enterprise flight later on this year. Yeah, she won't be alone out there. The remains of fellow Star Trek icons Gene Roddenberry, Majel Barrett Roddenberry, and James Scotty Duhon. Fans can send tribute messages that will be launched with them. Nichols, by the way, portrayed Lieutenant Uhura on the original Star Trek series. She died on July 31st at the age of 89. Man's best friends getting the spotlight today, of course. It is National Dog Day. In fact, the entire month of August is National Dog Month. The day was created to recognize how many dogs need to be rescued each year. It also honors the dogs that put their lives on the line each and every day, like law enforcement canine partners, dogs that help find and rescue victims of accidents or tragedies, and working companions for the disabled. Now, this is just one of many dog days. <laughs> you can look forward to National Dog Moms Day, National Rescue Dog Day, and National Make a Dogs Day, among other upcoming dog days. Dog days, which Adam was over there. He was writing them all down on his calendar oh, yeah, to make sure he gets that all squared away. Yeah, Reminders. surprised he didn't already have them on there. <laughs> oh, they, th this one was. Yeah. Yep.
Mm -hmm. We had, I mean, July, we were in the dog days of summer, that's for sure. Yeah. Seems like we're out of those now. It, it does, doesn't it? And the temperature trend is going to keep us below 100 again. Got this T-shirt ready. Look at that folding jacket. That is a great. Now, see, right. I, I, I was trying to give you praise for being a master forecaster and folder. <laughs> that proves it right there. Yeah, right. you've done a lot of those. Fits time. in my high caliber cannon. All right, mm -hmm. let's get to the rain chances this weekend. Generally dry, 10% chance, so just a few random pop-up afternoon showers. And then we get to 20% Monday, 30% Tuesday, and possibly even up to 40% by Wednesday. So there is some hope for some better rainfall and better coverage as we get into the middle part of next week. You look out there right now and there's still some activity, but it's for the most part coming to an end slowly but surely. You look at the animation over the past hour and this thunderstorm that was really lit up over Goliad is already starting to lose its punch and dissipate a bit. But over Kennedy or near Kennedy, we had another flare up as well. You look at this and you see how there's not as much lightning with it and even the rain has started to really shrink in its coverage and its intensity. But right there where the three counties come together, you got Atascosa, Carnes, and even Wilson County, nice little downpour. Between Pleasanton and Jernton, here's that what's left over of that shower. Not a whole lot, just some moderate rain due south of Pleasanton, just west of 281 there. And you get near Pearsall, this is what was better organized near Hondo and Sabinal and even to Hennis. This has been pushing south, north Pearsall. No lightning associated with it, but a decent quick rain shaft as well. This is going to stay south of Moore along the I-35 corridor. Here's a look at the animation of it. And you see just that brief little development. I don't anticipate it to last all that much longer. Again, I think the high school football games will be OK, but here's a good time lapse. You see that downpour off in the distance. That was the heavy rain on the south side this afternoon. 83 degrees now. Dew point is 69. Southerly wind at 11. That wind's going to pump the brakes and pretty much be calm tonight where we had the rain. Temps are in the 70s. Port SA 78, Stinson as well. And then you get to Hondo, 78 degrees, but you go up to Rio Medina, it's 85, Bandera 88, 87 right now in Bulverde, and 94 in New Braunfels. Catula at 95, that's one of the hot spots out there. Dew points, they're way up. I mean, we're talking into the 70s for a good portion of our area. So we're feeling that mugginess and it's a tropical air mass in place. So it's going to remain very sticky and muggy. Actually, it's only going to get more humid as the night goes on. And tomorrow morning, we'll start the day with the deweys in the mid 70s and they're not going to drop off much. Often in the summer, we see a big drop in those dew points in the afternoon. That's not going to be the case, unfortunately, just very sticky and tropical like 76 in the morning, mid 90s for high temperature by the afternoon, about 94 in Castorville, 93 Canyon Lake, 93 in Floresville and Converse about 93 sunny and humid all weekend with just a 10% chance of a rogue shower each afternoon. And then as I mentioned before we get into next week, we raise those rain chances, but should get some better coverage. But of course, we'll keep you updated as we will be fine tuning that forecast. Now back to folding. <laughs> Thank you, Adam. In case you missed it, Coming up next, it's got to fold a lot before tomorrow. You realize that here's today's in case you missed it. Congratulations, everybody. We made it to Friday. It's August 26th. San Antonio police were called to the Amber Hill apartments in the 5300 block of Northwest Loop 410. The call was about a person with a gunshot wound. According to police, the victim was seen by a witness who told police that he saw the victim standing outside the apartments talking to another male. The witness went back inside the apartment, then heard a loud pop, then went back outside and called police. The victim was shot once in the head and taken to University Hospital. That is where he later died. More than a decade's worth of evidence in the department's property room was destroyed or it was removed without prosecutorial review. Today, the Shirts Police Department confirmed that more than a thousand cases were impacted, most of those in Guadalupe County and some in Bear and Comal. Twelve cases will be dismissed in Guadalupe County as a result of the errors. The department has not said if any officers have been disciplined. The U.S. economy is still struggling with inflation, and the timeline for when prices will stop increasing isn't quite clear yet. Federal Reserve Chairman Jerome Powell today saying the central bank remains focused on taming inflation. While higher interest rates, slower growth, and softer labor market conditions will bring down inflation, they will also bring some pain to households and businesses. 
Britney Spears released Hold Me Closer, her first song in six years. And it's a duet with Elton John. The track is a mashup of John's classic 1971 hit, Tiny Dancer. It's also Spears' first effort since the end of her 13-year conservatorship. John says his husband convinced him to work with Spears on this track. Rain's dissipating out there. It's going to be pretty quiet the rest of the evening and the night. And this weekend, I wanted to show you the proper technique for this. All right, so you go sleeves in. Now, this side, you got to fold a little bit more. And I'll show you why in a minute. Flip up, up, over, half, flip, <laughs> and then roll. And you roll fairly tight, but not too tight, because you want to just snug in the canyon. And then you tape. And the reason I did that is because then the KSAT is right on the front. See that? Was there a little trial like and error here to figure that out? I want like a softball to throw and yeah. see if I can knock the KSAT t-shirts off the table like a carnival game. <laughs> see, it's Doesn't snug. it seem like that's what the, these, you Yes, know? it does. Yeah. Here you go. This fits the highest caliber. I don't want to hit my Don't hit the light. Oh, come on. You think I can't catch it? <laughs> Got it. <laughs> no, I didn't want to hit you. Okay. There we go. She attacked. On the outside. Overhand, I would have hit that light. <laughs>